Okay, so for week three of summer anime, the shows are fire. So many emotional moments as, you know, the stories kind of continue. Great animation on a lot of shows, good action scenes. My Hero Academy actually went on break this week, but I didn't talk about the last episode we had. So yeah, episode 11, some shit happened. Uh, I, I, won't, I won't really talk about it, but yeah, Bakugo showed out, but then, you know, Shigaraki kind of OP, and then uh, it, it was a bit tragic at the end. So yeah, I, I had, this was very unexpected for me. Like, I, I knew people were, like, losing limbs and shit. Like, I feel like this isn't what we think it is. We gotta see if uh, shows continue near Automata. New ending. Oh god, bro, this is peak. The music is insanely good as well, so yeah, I love watching it. The romance shows continue, everything else looks very good, so yeah, let's get started. I'll start talking about Oshinoko, so season 2, episode 4, what a great episode. Emotional moment by um Aqua, because he's trying to do the emotional acting to like kind of better show his character. But in order to do that, he has to kind of lock in. He has to like feel a, like a really strong emotion, either happiness or sadness or something. And that'll kind of like make him be able to portray the character better. Because he's usually kind of a supporting actor. He doesn't have the natural talent. So he uses stuff in his environment to get him stronger. But yeah, now he has to be more emotional with his acting. And it just traumatizes him. My dude gets PTSD and passes out. So yeah, a lot of stuff happened in this episode. We kind of solved the problem with the script writing. Because Abiko kind of watched the play and she was like, Wow, okay, I appreciate the art here. No way I can write it myself. So she kind of like collapsed with Goa, who was the original script writer. He writes pretty good scripts, but the earlier communication gap made them have all the problems before. So yeah, they kind of like collab. They do like a quick Zoom meeting. Just like talk about it instantly, work in real time. And then they can both like edit, make changes, erase stuff. And then, you know, they, they trim a lot of the fat. Basically a lot of like extra unneeded lines they remove. And instead kind of make sure like people can portray it with their movements. So yeah, that kind of ties in with Aqua because yeah he has to act better because the script is more vague now so yeah i mean abiko's happy go is happy everyone's kind of like solved the problem with the script so yeah now aqua's trying to lock in for the emotional acting kind of kind of gives him some tips where she's like yo just imagine some like very strong emotional moment you had like you know just pretend your mom died or something and yeah you know aqua just immediately goes in his head like very well done because yeah once he tries to imagine his emotional acting either like a really happy moment like him hanging out with Ruby and everyone. He just sees like visions of his past self, like kind of saying, wow, you shouldn't be enjoying yourself. You shouldn't be having fun. So yeah, I mean, it's very sad because it's like Aqua's like a sad boy permanently. He has to like kind of live for revenge. He can't really live his life normally as a high school dude. Because yeah, first of all, he's like an isekai dude. So just like his second chance. And second of all, yeah, he just like lives for revenge at this point. Because you know, I, she was the best girl. We have to kind of avenge her. So yeah, Akane kind of takes care of Aqua as he like collapses while he's like going into his head. And then they kind of go to the director's house, who's kind of like a father figure for Aqua. He kind of tells Akane about Aqua's backstory on how he has like some type of PTSD, but he made a recovery. Akane, she has like her creepy kind of profiling skills. So she instantly kind of puts the pieces together where she's like, wow, Aqua is the child of an idol oh my god and now she kind of understands aqua's goal of like you know getting revenge on the murder so you know their bond is getting like closer a very good like strong emotional episode as well every time we're kind of solving a problem some new problems resurface but overall the play seems to be like going well akane and aqua are like kind of getting stronger together so maybe they'll like help each other act but yeah, this anime has been very fun and very good also after that we have near automata version 1.1a part 2 episode 4 it was so sad i wasn't ready for it i knew what was gonna happen but oh shit <laughs> Seeing 2v kind of get like a hopeful type of conclusion with Ninus. Maybe they can finally be together. All the war is over. But, you know, this is near Automata. There's just a lot of pain, a lot of fighting, a lot of sadness, a lot of questioning on what is humanity. So what happens here, basically, uh, we saw like the Yorha ship, the command base exploded. So there's basically nowhere else to go. You either stay on Earth. If you die, you can't respawn. So, so this is like your android body permanently. So yeah, they start kind of crashing down onto Earth. They have their like kind of Gundam spacesuits that they're like using to brace for impact. But the problem is some other androids are kind of like fighting them. Everyone is like infected by the virus pretty much. So 2B kind of forces 9S to run away because, you know, he's just a scouting unit. 2B is kind of like holding things down by herself. So she cuts some of the androids up. And 9S also comes in last second and saves her as she's like falling out of her spacesuit. So yeah, they're both together. 
The problem is the androids are kind of going batshit crazy attacking each other, and now they're just releasing their black boxes and killing each other. <laughs> the, the black block explosion was like very huge. It separated 2B and 9S, so they landed in different places. 9S landed in the desert, but 2B is just by herself in the forest area, which kind of sucks because she's also infected again. Also, she lost her left arm, so yeah, she's just trying to kill all these robots with one arm, one sword. Her pod is helping her out, but yeah, it's like only a matter of time before she gets infected again. Very painful, very sad seeing like this like slow progression of her dying and then yeah she meets up with two other androids that are infected they're about to kill her but then she gets rescued by a2 yes we saw her she's here she's one of the good ones i guess like she she saw the evils of yorha a while ago she's pretty much you know like an original 2b unit but with like longer hair now and she kills 2b so yeah i mean a2 gets the memories which is fine but then yeah she has to kill 2b she stabs her, which was like, you know, mutually agreed upon. But 9S comes last minute. He he sees like the worst possible circumstance, A2 murdering his waifu, and he just like gets really angry. He's on this bridge. So he kind of like runs, tries to attack her, but then the bridge collapses as this whole like kind of huge white temple building spawns from the ground. <laughs> so this random ass building like just appearing out of nowhere. It looks like this robot temple. But yeah, like, you know, story goes on. I mean, very sad ending right now. This isn't like the full ending yet, but yeah, A2 murdering 2B. Like, is our girl permanently dead? Come on, we gotta save her. So yeah, we'll see what's gonna happen. But yeah, we lost the main character, so we might get more of the anime from A2's perspective. Also, yeah, Nine Us is there angry. So yeah, maybe we'll see what both of them are up to next episode but you know love the story so far very emotional exactly what you expect if you played the game i'd say the anime so far has been paced very uh quickly things happen before you have a chance to process them you don't really you haven't really been attached to these characters you, you aren't building them and fighting the monsters yourself so yeah that's one advantage the video game does have over the anime but i mean this part two has been good the action scenes with 2v are so nice and you know the emotional moments are still there so if people die people die all right so for monogatari off and monster season episode four we kind of continue this nadeko drawing arc so she defeated one spirit last week which is the flirty nadeko now she's trying to track down the shy nadeko so yeah it's in araragi's house she goes inside, but it's empty. Our Rocky's not there. Uh, where, where's my man? I guess we won't see him this season, which is fine. So yeah, Nadeko's kind of like sneaking into the house, trying to find the shy Nadeko. And then yeah, she comes across like something in Araragi's room. She opens it, but it's the angry Nadeko. And the angry one is like really tough, trying to stab the normal Nadeko body, just like jumps on her and stuff. That's so like a random ass fight scene in Araragi's room. Nadeko is trying to like dodge the knife stabs. It looks like angry Nadeko can just like produce infinite pens and attack her. So yeah, the base Nadeko kind of like baits her by like putting a bunch of papers in her stomach. So when the angry Nadeko kind of like dives into her stomach to stab her, she just like get sucked into the paper and you know easy good very smart by my girl and you know two spirits down so yeah there's two left one is the god nadeko though the like snake girl so i mean she's back we it's probably like the strongest one there we gotta deal with her but yeah nadeko kind of cleans up the room a bit and tries to leave but then she gets a phone call in Araki's house so she picks it up which you shouldn't do like why aren't you running away <laughs> but she picks it up and says her name she's like oh this is nadeko here and who's on the phone is sancho gara Oh my god, we see her again, my queen, short hair. Uh, no stapler this time, but yeah, Nadeko kind of it gets scared. It, it's like an awkward situation because I think the last time they interacted was when Nadeko was like the snake form. <laughs> so like she threatened to kill Aragi and Sencho Garo. So yeah, she kind of instantly runs away after, you know, saying like one word to her <laughs> and panicking. That was a pretty funny interaction. I, I wonder if she's going to like, you know, show up again in the town and maybe talk to her or clear the air. But <laughs> yeah, besides that, another funny situation. We beat the Wrath Nadeko. We talked to Sencho. Shogara, and now we kind of meet up with Yotsugi because she's fighting the snake god Nadeko. The problem is Yotsugi's body is like cut into pieces. <laughs> So she lost. It looks like she got baited by the shy Nadeko. So yeah, they're, they're both working together. And yeah, she couldn't use her unlimited rulebook in time to blast her away. She got cut up. Now Nadeko is kind of playing like a puzzle piece, trying to like gather all the pieces and attach them back. It's fine because Yotsugi is like an immortal kind of undead doll. So it doesn't matter if she gets cut up, she's still alive. But I mean, the sad part is that like her hair gets cut up. So new design, actually. She still has her hat, but yeah, she just like looks like slightly different now. And yeah, basically we're on like a time limit because I guess as the two Nadekos kind of in interact with each other they might absorb each other's personality so the shy nadeko might turn into god nadeko there might be two god nadekos which is something we have to avoid because yeah our girls cannot handle that by themselves but yeah there, there's like some solutions that they're hinting at one solution is they could talk to mayoi who's like the snail god because he's kind of like overlooking everything 
she can lend her power, but they want to like avoid that. They don't want really to want to trouble anybody. Another solution they can do is talk to a uh, Kaiki, who can like you know hypnotize people, and you know like con them. So they can con them, and that goes to be like weaker. But they also hinted that there's some like timeline shit happening because we saw one of the Nadekos was like literally naked, like no top. But over here in Yotsugi's perspective. The shy Nadeko was like fully clothed, like she was wearing a swimsuit. So I feel like maybe the god Nadeko turned into another shy Nadeko and became an exhibitionist. Maybe that happened? I mean, it'll probably still end up in a fight at the end of the day. They said um, Yotsugi has only one unlimited rulebook usage left. So basically, we're on the hunt for two Nadekos. We'll probably finish up this arc next week. But yeah, the normal Nadeko does have the power of the two ones she captured. So she has the angry Nadeko and the flirty Nadeko's power. So yeah, I mean, we'll see what's going to happen. It looks like Yotsugi is definitely going to help out as well. New short hair designed for her. So yeah, very cute i like it but yeah besides that i'm thoroughly enjoying this arc you know the stories are very captivating seeing like some random action scenes being animated as these girls are trying to just like clean up the mess that they created okay so for the elusive samurai episode four another solid episode more villains are coming through Another episode down, another like kind of Oni demon general out here. Tokiyuki's trying to run from all of them, but here he can't really run. So Yorishike's temple now is being like overtaken by these like evil generals. The main one is Sadamune, who's like this like really good archer. He has like that shot Hawkeye level powers. He can just like shoot things very quickly at long range. His eyesight is insanely good. He can see anybody around him. So yeah, the best thing is to like, I guess, run away from him and maybe like catch him off guard or something. But yeah, there's like this like kind of dog shooting competition out here and now it's like a gamble if sadamune wins the dog shooting competition then he can like search the whole temple and you know like find any traitors and kill them <laughs> and yeah that's a problem because tokiyuki's hiding here so then the priest agrees with the gamble and he puts up tokiyuki to fight him so it's like a sniping competition they're both on horseback and just like shooting dogs so yeah, tokiyuki's like very inexperienced like all he knows is to run away but i mean he knows a bit of archery i guess but it kind of goads on sadamune that's how he kind of tries to win so, yeah, tokiyuki's very adept at running away he's just like dodging the arrows and then you know shooting back at sadamune and he's basically winning but sadamune kind of like hits tokiyuki in the head with his last arrow so yeah sadamune has five points tokiyuki has one point but he has one more arrow left so the episode kind of ends there as tokiyuki kind of gets like this adrenaline rush by being shot in the head he's like damn this is life or death i'm so turned on right now bro i'm so happy so yeah my boy is pumped Maybe, like, he'll do a good comeback next episode and, I mean, kill Sadamune, maybe. Because, yeah, this dude is a villain. We see that all the other villains are, like, like demonic monsters. Like, they have, like, multiple eyeballs on their eyes. So, yeah, it looks like demons are actually, like, possessing these samurai and causing them to, like, you know, try to be gods and destroy the world. Um, Some other stuff that happened, though. Like, I think the art in this anime is insanely good. But then uh, this episode did have a lot of CGI, uh, especially with the horseback riding. So that's, like, one random flaw in this episode. But yeah, overall, you know, sword continues. New villain out here, Sadamune, OP ass archer, and Tokiyuki straight up just fighting him. He's not even running away. Now it's like a 1v1 kind of dog fighting battle. All right, so for Tower of God Season 2, Episode 4, a somewhat underwhelming wrap up to this exam. But I mean, it's fine. It's like a feel good moment. Everyone, all the good guys, kind of defeated the bad guys. Some people died, but in the end, we kind of achieved our goal. We see Viole, aka Bam. He's teaming up with Ja. All the other kind of good people are teaming up with them. There's the Fire Princess. There's like that little girl and her caretaker. There's that big Giga Chad with the fist powers. And then there's the other kind of silver dude that's like kind of taking care of people. So yeah, that seems to be our main cast of characters. Basically, it's like a cheesy wrap up where Bam, he was kind of fighting the Proctor 1v1. The Proctor hates Fugs. And then he's like targeting Bam, wants to kill him. But basically, yeah, they start fighting. There's one more ball to catch. It looks like Bam missed. But then Ja comes in. He takes Bam's like remote control. So yeah, Viola teams up with Ja. And now he's kind of like fighting all the evil people. Basically the evil debt collectors. One more funny thing that happens in uh, the South Floor 20, which I don't really like, is that everyone is in debt. Like, cause uh, you know, we know everyone, like the test is really expensive. So they're just like trapped here. They can't climb up. It's kind of like a letdown because yeah, literally everyone has the same backstory here. Like the little ramen seller person as well. We see that person actually died. We see that he was working with the bad guys to kind of like save his ramen shop. And then he was like trying to make people fail on purpose. <laughs> but then yeah, he gets killed. And then Ja kind of forgives the dude that killed him which was like his death collector that wanted his kidneys. So yeah, I mean, literally underwhelming result over here. Jaffer gives him. The reason he did was like pretty solid, I guess, because he's like, oh, I did evil stuff too. I might do like even worse shit when I'm going to climb up the tower. 
So I want someone to forgive me in that case. So yeah, I guess Shao, you know, supporting the um, people can be reformed, people can change. So he doesn't murder the dude that killed his friend. It looks like the head proctor kind of made it so this was the final exam. And everyone on Jaws' team wins, basically. So yeah, I guess we'll see this cast kind of like keep going. Maybe they'll stick together. We see Viole, he's like, he's trying to climb the tower. He doesn't know for revenge either, but he wants to meet Rachel. <laughs> so I, I think that's his goal. He, he, you know, he has some questions for her. And yeah, that's it. So yeah, I mean, the episode was okay. Like I, Again, a bit underwhelming. I don't think the story quality went down, but maybe like the way the anime was directed feels definitely underwhelming compared to season one. I know people complain about season one, but it was really popular. So I think the fact that season two, we had to wait a long time and it's not really hitting the same way it is definitely a problem. There might be some exciting episodes coming forward in the future. I'm happy no one really got left behind besides the ramen delivery person. We see there's some like stuff going on where like apparently they want Ja to climb up the tower. So yeah, apparently he's a big deal. We see that he wants to change the way like this tower works where he wants like equality for everyone. He wants to stop the injustice. And also at the end of this episode, we see that blue haired dude, Kuhn. So yeah, he was one of Bam's besties. I don't know what he's doing here or where like where in the tower he is. But yeah, more familiar characters out here. I guess we'll see what they're going to do. All right. And now for Shika Noko 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 Kosh Tan Tan episode four. Yeah, more dear brain rot. We meet a new character. It's like the student council girl. So her name is Neko. She's kind of like the short, cute girl, but she has like this sinister plot. She wants to break up the deer club they're up to no good and she hates koshitan because she's a student council president and i guess like she wants to be the real student council president so yeah we meet like members of the student council there's this girl that cries after like every mistake there's this girl that's kind of really quiet but looks up to shika noko uh, the funny part is they kind of forget about the student council because everyone just like joins the deer club so i guess like shit doesn't matter i kind of feel sad for the red-haired girl but yeah you know she gotta take the l in this comedy show she's kind of just like by herself in the student council we see a lot of funny moments there's this random music video playing where like these deer crackers are just like crying out very solid funny moments overall and you know more characters out here everyone is like super crazy so yeah more cute moments with chika noko and koshitan not that much else to say here but yeah the anime continues okay so for makene too many losing heroines episode three uh yeah you know pretty chill episode i haven't talked about this show too much but uh you know romance show it looks very good like so clean the environments the backgrounds the food especially the character animations are also like very solid like you know people are just like talking most of the time but it's also like a lot of subtle movements as they're running nodding their heads it's like very solid very clean so yeah i know a lot of people are praising the animation uh story itself isn't really anything crazy so far i was expecting like a pattern happening where each of the girl kind of breaks up with their childhood friend immediately and then they kind of just like hang out with the main dude it seems like they're kind of taking their time or maybe some of them still have some hope some of the childhood friends don't want to lose yet but yeah like judging from the title they're all gonna lose so yeah there was a beach episode this week you know some fan service a bit of story progression as we kind of like get all three girls together so yeah so far we have the main blue haired girl who's in debt to the main character we have this kind of like tan athletic girl and then we also have this like short red haired girl so yeah all three of them are trying to you know get into a relationship with a significant other the two of them failed so far but then the short red-haired girl actually makes her move this episode one of the dudes they were on the beach trip together she admits her feelings to him after he kind of like rescued her from like a firework exploding on her face and then she's like yeah i like you i've always liked you and episode ends there on a cliffhanger so i mean he's definitely gonna say no for some reason like he probably does have a girlfriend but you know if he says yes plot twist of the century that means the title is the lie <laughs> So yeah, but we'll see what's gonna happen. So yeah, on that note, I guess we'll talk about another one. So yeah, Alia sometimes hides her feelings in Russian. So yeah, we have episode four here. It's kind of cute. We see Kuze helping Alia because there's like this dispute between the baseball team and the soccer team. They're trying to like use the same court at the same time. And then Alia doesn't really know how to like settle things down. No one's really listening to her. She feels so sad. He's like, help me in Russian. Someone help me. I don't know why the student council let her do this by herself. She seems like very inexperienced and not good with talking to people. But, you know, Kuze hears the Russian. He kind of wanted her to learn like the hard way. But then once like she started crying like by herself and asking for help in Russian, he he walks in oh my god bro the giga chat he instantly kind of like solves the problem because he's like pretty good with like reading the room he can like see people and understand like what they're gonna do so yeah he kind of convinces the soccer team to like you know help out the baseball team and then one of them gets to court but the other one gets like more help more support from like the other girls so they're all like into his plan alia is just like saved 
she like kind of confesses her feelings to him she actually says i love you to him that that shit was insane like drops the l bomb i, I was shocked <laughs> like kuza even hears this like, i mean he's keeping it low-key like <laughs> i don't know how long he's gonna like keep up the farce but it's crazy and then if that wasn't crazy enough alia kind of kisses him on the cheek as like he's walking her home oh my god like like come on they're literally dating already like you can't just like gloss over that but yeah they're probably gonna forget about it next week you know alia's like very embarrassed about this but you know a prop to her for like making her move we see alia's older sister is a bit attached to kuze because she is the childhood friend so she kind of warns alia that if she takes her time someone might steal kuze from her so yeah is it gonna be her it be your own family sometimes but yeah you know alia's the clear winner so far it's only a matter of time before things get serious but yeah you know i love the progression each episode very cute and yeah, another romance show pseudo harem episode four yes i love the romance uh this one's so cute again like every episode is like pretty much the same thing you know nanakura just like getting so much more closer to the main guy like pretty much just like a lot of random skits happen like here one of them was like she's like, drinking this disgusting juice but like trying to pretend that it like tastes fine so she has like that good kind of poker face out here but there's another one where she can't really wink so yeah, that's like one of her flaws so she's trying to like learn from Eiji. also after that we see nurse nanakura because Eiji gets injured like he kind of falls on his ribs and, and knee I look like that Gordon Ramsay picture with like half of his like body just bruised. <laughs> but yeah, Nanakura just like dressing up as the nurse wearing the overcoat and like, you know, disinfecting him. That shit was insane. Like another level, like my dude AG is so lucky. But yeah, Nanakura kind of like being like the older kind of mature nurse and they kind of play on the eye exam. So they're like kind of making each other say their names and like, you know, cute things. So I mean, so many cute moments. They're giggling. They're talking to each other. The interactions are so nice. And finally, we end the episode with Nanakura kind of like visiting his house because it starts raining. So she kind of like takes a shower and changes clothes at his house. They have matching like dog shirts. The mom comes in too. The mom approves of the relationship. Oh my god, it's so cute. Like they're pretty much dating already. Like they like each other. But yeah, I wonder how long it'll take until it'll actually be official. We gotta see, you know, only four episodes in. So yeah, a lot more stuff can happen as the anime does continue. Okay, so for Dead Demons DDD Destruction Episode 9. Yeah, more stuff is, like, happening. Like, uh, we get escalations episode by episode, but then we get cooldowns. Like, uh, aliens are here, people know it, but no one's really doing anything major about it. It's like the government are kind of, like, you know, killing them off, like, one at a time. But overall, you know, to Tokyo's still, like, big chilling, you know? There might be some conspiracy theories out here. There might be some people causing drama and trouble and war. But overall, you know, nothing has escalated majorly. I mean, last week we saw like, you know, all the alien babies falling. So that was like pretty much the big thing. But yeah, we kind of like continue and forget about that. So yeah, here we see our main cast, like with uh, Kadode, Ontan, and everybody. They graduated high school. So they're pretty much like, you know, working, doing college stuff. And then they meet this girl, Futaba, who was like the girl we saw last week, who was from like a small town that wanted to like visit Tokyo to see like if the aliens are actually nice or not. So yeah, she makes friends with the main cast. They all kind of hang out and stuff. Also, another weird thing happens. Kadode kind of goes out with her teacher uh, i mean like she's 18 now i guess but it's still a bit weird like why are they pushing this plot line like how do they come on so they kind of have like a random date like they do things it's fine like nothing really happens and how they kind of like walks away from him and she's like yeah i'll see you later bro so that happens we also see Ontan kind of hang out with this other like dude from her college he has like this broccoli shaped head he has like some information about the aliens so like, he's in the occult club as well so he invites Ontan over to his house and that's where she meets the kind of like celebrity alien dude the black haired guy that she met earlier they, they keep meeting for some reason and then he sneezes and then his alien form his face kind of like spins off they can't just play that off <laughs> that's like a funny interaction I, i'm only really curious what's gonna happen as we kind of continue the anime also at the end there's like this like sad moment where all the aliens are kind of taking refuge in a house and then one of the aliens like meets up with the husband and the problem is the wife alien gets murdered gets stabbed by like the three humans we saw so one of them was the dude that was into like conspiracy theories he was in a relationship with the other girl that got crushed so she was also part of like the main cast of girls so it looks like he's kind of like killing the aliens for revenge i mean it, it's not really justified because like it was the government's fault in the first place but yeah i mean he puts the blame on the aliens for even like invading so yeah a lot of sad moments like these aliens are getting murdered so it'll probably like lead to some retaliation in the future and yeah more alien murder like we've seen from episode zero how shit's gonna escalate so, i mean i guess people are the main problem here in this story all right so for quality assurance in another world episode four yeah i guess i see what happened to the crowd strike QA testers. They were too busy being isekai to help verify this like Microsoft security patch. But yeah, you know, the anime kind of continues. Like the story is kind of coming into its own now where we see like there's like evil QA testers that are just like stuck in this world. They don't want to do their jobs anymore. So they're just like playing in this world like a sandbox world. 
And just like, you know, torturing people, assaulting all the NPCs. Kind of crazy. So it's up to Haga and to Nicola to kind of save everybody. Just like report every bug, stop all the evil QA testers, take their debugging stones and break them. And then maybe eventually they'll be able to get back home. So yeah, a lot of like interesting and emotional stuff happens. Uh, when we see like they kind of come across the, this village where everyone's T-posing. <laughs> It is kind of funny, so they just like report the bug, they list all the NPCs that are T-posing, and then fix them. So it looks like as they're like reporting these bugs, they do get fixed. So someone is reading their bug reports. So I mean, that is some clue on the story, but this is still like a massive game, so there's still a lot of work to do. Also, we see that the evil villains are kind of like hunting down Haga, they kind of crushed this whole village that they were in that they just fixed. There's also the sad moment where we see like there was like this NPC in this village that you tell stories to as like a side quest, but then they crushed the NPC's house, so that NPC died. One of the other QA testers that was like very peaceful and wants to like hang out with this NPC. And the fact that she died here, like it, it's not like she died forever. They do respawn like after every day, it seems like, but they lose all the memories. <laughs> so it's not the same NPC that he was hanging out with for like a whole six months. So yeah, it's like a sad moment there. He kind of like vows for revenge. So I guess he'll team up with Haga, maybe attack them. We'll see. We see Nikolai is also possessed by this meta AI called Tesla. So her name is like kind of on the nose, Nikolai Tesla, but it looks like she's helping Haga kind of like kill everybody, fix the game and stop all the QA testers. And that is it for the shows this week. Thank you for watching. You know, a solid week, very strong emotional episodes. Oshinoko, very good. I love how well directed everything is, just like taking stuff from the manga, amplifying it so much. All the other romance shows are very solid and, you know, near Automata hitting us with the feels. And yeah, can't wait for more shows next week. So yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you for keeping up. I'll see you.